Good day everyone. The topic to be discussed in this video are the web, internet, netiquette, and computer ethics. Let us first define web. The web, or also known as the World Wide Web, is a subset of the internet that consists of pages that can be accessed using a web browser. Many people confuse the web and the internet and the use of the terms interchangeably. However, the term internet actually refers to the global network of servers that enables information sharing via the web. Web 1.0 Web 1.0 is a term used to distinguish the first stage of the WWW or the World Wide Web from the current stage of internet technology. At the beginning of the uh, Web 1.0, there were first very few web content creators, second WWW or read-only web since there was no user interaction. Next, web pages are static. Static means that none of the content displayed was generated by any other code or script. Now, static pages do not change unless the creator manually modifies the file and appear the same to all visitors. Lastly, Feedback mechanism was through private email and direct comment was not available. Next is Web 2.0. In 2004, the term Web 2.0 was first used. It was the first or it was the birth of social media platforms such as Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Users can now interact, contribute, and create using the internet, which has also facilitated or which has also facilitated the spread of various types of information over the internet. Now, the internet evolved uh, into a tool for communicating with people virtually. Web pages are now created using the uh, web programming language such as PHP. Python, Ruby, and Perl. It became easier to share videos, photos, stories, and opinions. Now, Web 2.0 was the introduction of the term read-write web. Next, we have the Web 3.0 or 3.0. Now, Web 3.0 is also known as semantic web or data-driven web content and response by web experts. Web services such as programs that can interact with a website to search for what a person is looking for are created in addition to what Web 2.0 and Web, uh, 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 web 1.0 can do. Now, Web 3.0 evolve into an improved version of web 1.0 and web 2.0 now to summarize web 1.0 is only capable of viewing websites while web 2.0 enables users participation collaboration interaction content creation and virtually virtual community involvement because of all the information, user-generated content, and contributions from people who use the web, uh, Web 3.0 is the next development on the web. Now, web 3.0 transforms user-created and contributed web content into useful information as needed by the user. Web 3.0 is also known as data-driven or semantic web, which is used for web services to meet the needs of the user. The next topic is the internet. So, what is internet? 
Now, the internet is a global wide area network that connects computer systems worldwide. It consists of several high bandwidth data lines that make up the internet's backbone. Now, these lines connect to major internet hubs which distribute data to other locations like web servers and ISP or internet service provider. So how did the uh, internet started? Here is a brief timeline on the history of the internet. 1960s now 1960s is where the internet began as a means of government research to share data now computers in the 1960s were large and immobile and in order to use them or to use information stored in any one computer or any computer one had to either travel to the computer's location or have magnetic computer tapes sent via the traditional postal system. Now, the ARPANET or Advanced Research Projects Agency Network is the network that gave rise to what we now call the internet. The ARPANET was a huge success, but membership was restricted to academic and research institutions with contracts with the Defense Department in the United States. As a result, other networks were formed to facilitate information sharing. Now, in 1970s, specifically in 1973, Robert Kahn and Vinton Cerf worked together to create a protocol for, cre uh, for connecting multiple networks. This evolved into the uh, Transmission Control Protocol, Protocol, Internet Protocol, or the TCP/IP, a technology that connects multiple networks so that if one fails, the others do not. Next is in 1980s. Now, University of Delaware's Dave Farber reveals a project to build a low-cost network using dial-up phone lines. The uh, phone net system is established in 1982 and is linked to ARPANET and the first commercial network, Telenet. This broaden internet access and enables email communication between countries all over the world. Now, the internet celebrated its official birthday on January 1, 1983. Prior to this, there was no standard way for computer networks to communicate with one another. Transfer Control Protocol Internet Protocol or TCPIP was created as a new communication protocol. This enabled various types of computer on different networks to talk to one another. 1990s. ARPANET is decommissioned in 1990. Tim Berners-Lee and his colleagues at CERN created the Hypertext Markup Language or the HTML and the Uniform Resource Locator or URL which gave birth to the World Wide Web's first incarnation. Two thousand and present. The dot com bubble starts to burst. BitTorrent, Facebook, Amazon, Google, and Apple's iPhone, which released a platform for mobile web use, came to revolutionize internet use. Now the internet has changed dramatically, and there is every indication that it will continue to change in unpredictably or in uh, unpredictable ways as a result professionals must stay ahead of the curve 
in order to maximize their potential in their future careers or in this case for your future careers. Now, learning more about the current and future digital landscape in the classroom is one of the best ways to understand it. We now go to the different components of the internet. So what are the components of the internet? So here are five major components. So let's discuss them one by one. The first component is servers. Now, a server is a computer, okay, that makes data available to other computers. There are numerous types of servers, including web servers, mail servers, and file servers. Now, each type runs a software that is specific to the server's purpose. Next, we have the IP address as a component of the internet. Now, the IP address is a logical numeric address assigned to each computer or printer or a switch or a router or anything that is connected on the uh, computer system or the network system or other devices, okay, which is a part of a TCP IP based network. Now, the IP address is the foundation upon which the networking architecture is built. So, without it, no network exists. So, that is how important an IP address is. Now, an IP address is a logical address used to uniquely identify each node in a network. Think of an IP address as your fingerprint, okay? So that is, uh, or in your case, if you're a student, it can be, it can probably be your, your uh, student number, okay? Which identifies you, okay? And only you. Next, we have the browser. Now, a browser is a software application that allows you to view the internet or in and interact, okay, with all of the information on the World Wide Web. Web pages, videos, and images are all examples of this. Now, prior to the web, the term browser referred to user interfaces that allowed you to browse, navigate through, and read text files online. So examples of a browser is, a, is the uh, uh, Google Chrome, uh, uh, Opera Mini, okay, and many more. Next, we have the domain name system or DNS. Now, domain, na domain names are memorable names for websites and other internet services. Computers, on the other hand, connect to the internet via their IP addresses. Now, DNS converts domain names into IP addresses allowing you to access a website by its domain name. The last component is the Internet Service Provider or the ISP. So, I'm sure most of you already know what an ISP is. Now, uh, to give definition to an ISP, so an ISP allows access to the internet. So every time you connect to the internet, whether at home or at work, your connection is routed, routed through an ISP. Next on the list, or the different uh, uses of the internet. So I have listed here some of the uses, okay? These are the most commonly used of the internet now nowadays. Okay, first is the electronic mail. So the first major application of the internet is email, okay? People flock to uh, email to instantly share information, date, data files, photos, videos, business communications, and other files with others. 
Okay, this enable com- uh, people to uh, communicate more quickly and improve business efficiency. Now, email has significantly reduced the use of paper and the load on physical mail systems. Next, we have the FTP file transfer. Okay, or what uh, FTP stands for file transfer protocol. Okay, now this was the internet's second most important use case in its early days. Now, FTP or file transfer protocol is a file transfer protocol that allows two stakeholders to securely exchange data over the internet media. Now, data exchange can take place between two business entities or between two customers and businesses. Okay? Now, normally, a, an email limits the size of a file that can be shared. And sharing sensitive and confidential data across the public networks is not secure. Now, even today, the FTP concept is used to mobile apps for file downloading. Next use is the search engines. Okay, so these engines find information that one six now, which is available on any server around the world or the World Wide Web. Now, the most well known search engines in use today are Google, Yahoo, and MSN. Okay, on this site. One can stretch for anything, and the search question can be in any format. Okay, so in fact, people have begun to use the term Google as a generic verb synonym with search. Next, we have the e commerce. Okay, so the e commerce. Now, the internet allows for the online sale of goods and services. Now, many e commerce platform vendors, such as the Amazon, the Ula, or in our case here in the Philippines, we have Lazada and Shopee, okay, aggregate various product services available in the market and sell them to customers through their portal. Now, platform vendors procure products, store them in their warehouse, pack them, and distribute them under their own brand. Next, we have the online banking, or we call it as net banking. Now, net banking or online banking allows you to conduct banking transactions from the comforts of your own home or while on the go. Now, footfalls in bank branches have decreased significantly as almost all services are now available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week through net banking. Now, through the servers, any amount of money can be transferred instantly. Electric bills, telephone bills, and other services can be paid using e-banking. Next, we have the uh, cashless transactions. Now, bill payments at merchants via debit cards, credit cards, and UPI gateway is on the rise. Now, cash circulation in the system is reduced in proportion to the growth of these transactions. Now, it is growing at a rate of more than 50% per year and is expected to grow tenfold over the next five years. Next is education. Okay, now with the structured navigation and search capabilities, okay, uh, the internet provides a wealth of educational materials on any subject. Now, any reading material can be sought and the internet will retrieve it from the, any server in any part of the world, eliminating the need for people to visit libraries to read books. Now, this is only one example okay, of, uh, for education. Next, we have collaboration. Okay, online chat tools such as Messenger, Skype, and other video conferencing tools uh, like Zoom or uh, Google Meet 
Okay? Enables people to stay connected 24 hours a day, 7 days a week for business or personal discussions. Now, this saves people time and allow them to spend it more productively. Okay? The internet has also made it possible to work from home as we, some of you may be experiencing right now while remaining connected to the office and avoiding daily commuting. Next, we have social networking. Okay, now, the internet connects people and allows them to form social groups or any social political issues, information, ideas, point of view, and opinions are exchanged. Now, this platform is used by political and social organizations to promote their case among the general public. The next topic to be discussed is netiquette and computer ethics. So, let us first define et netiquette. Now, netiquette is any abbreviation for internet etiquette. Now, netiquette is a code of good behavior on the internet. Much like etiquette is a code of polite behavior in society. Now, email, social media, online chat, web forums, web comments, multiplayer gaming, and other forms of of online communication are all part of an etiquette. Now, while there are no official list of netiquette rules or guidelines, the general idea is to respect others when using the internet. Now, here are some examples of netiquette rules uh, that you should follow. First is be respectful. Now everyone has a different has different feelings and opinions and it is more important to respect this online. If you wouldn't say it to someone's face, the internet is not the place to say it either. Next is be aware of how you your comments might be read. Okay, strong language, capital letters, and exclamation marks can be easily misinterpreted online. Now, think, think, okay? If you were to receive this comment, how would you uh, have felt? Okay, so you should ask yourself. Okay, next is be careful with humor and sarcasm. Now, it's always great to share jokes in the other uh, with others, okay? And it is important to be yourself online and let your personality shine through, okay? But always reread what you have written and think, will everyone get the joke? Okay, next is think about who you, who can see what you have shared, okay? Now, make sure... You keep as much of your personal information off of the internet as possible and never share anything inappropriate or that may get you into trouble. Remember, you are only a private as private as much Let me repeat that again. Remember, you are only as private as your much public friend. Okay? Next, okay, we have uh, remember to check friend requests and group invites before accepting them. Okay, the internet is a great place to share content and chat to fr with friends, but remember to review any new request before accepting them. Okay, if it isn't from someone you know or recognize, then it it is okay to decline the request. Next is take time to have a uh, take time to have a read of the rules of conduct or community standards. Okay, so what does this mean? Okay, every user has the right to have the same positive experience online. 
So, before using a new account, okay, take a moment to read the guidelines. As you know, the appropriate rules for posting, behavior, and what to do if you need to report something you see on this service. Okay? Lastly, we have forgiving. Okay? Or be forgiving. The online world can be very different from the offline world. So, try to be understanding of others when you struggle or when they struggle with online communication. Okay? Remember that not everyone will know these rules before posting or realize that they have upset someone else. And that concludes this topic. Thanks for watching.